Yo, yo, what is up guys? It's your boy Shield Coomer and this video will be about uh, Ruby Life Pools on Tyrannical. So I think this in particular this week was really interesting on Tyrannical, especially in Ruby Life Pools. This has been one of those games which is very well known for, you know, its difficulty on bosses and on trash. It's not easy on Fortified, it's not easy on Tyrannical. Both are, in my opinion, equally disgusting. And to make things even worse, uh, in this particular week, it was spiteful as well so he, all the big pulls and stuff he wanted to do it was quite tricky because you had to you know be very careful about uh where you pull and how you deal with spiteful afterwards mm, like in all honesty spiteful is one of those affixes that is just really easy from paper but sometimes in practice you know things kind of get out of control people maybe don't notice that they're being chased or something and sometimes they get killed as you can see quaking on its own is not only does it prevent casting but it also like comes with, blast. Um, like in general the meta this season for healing has been stacked as much as possible mainly because of evokers but like obviously i think every healer to a degree benefits from that it's just that uh, this this season in particular it's been very important so you know people not being able to stack because of quaking and also because of thundering like you kind of have to stay close as well right so <clears throat> it's just overall like quaking makes things difficult quaking plus thundering is just such an awful awful combination together and really dislike it i think it's a little bit of an over oversight on blizzard's part to leave these two affixes together like i kind of get it somebody might argue like oh it's not that bad you know you just spread for quaking then get it. yeah it's true but you know as you will see this this key like this combination makes certain bosses like a living nightmare it's really difficult so i'm surprised that i don't die from that by the way that's Ice shield. it's just a proof how 20s aren't even like i don't know achieving all 20s is not very easy right now and uh well it's not hard either don't get me wrong it's like you know once again i always say this everything is relative right like somebody might watch these videos and think I to themselves you know this this is nothing special and then somebody else might watch and think that you know things look really good it's all a matter of perspective i'm just like speaking from my personal experience i can tell you on priest especially before we got buffed after buff things have been easier but before buff reaching 20s even getting invited for 20s was a was a, a hustle on its own let alone getting to 20s i've had much easier time like doing my plugging on the walker for example Five, you just get more invites in general and uh it's, it's just easier honestly it's it's much easier i don't think that evoker is that much stronger than priest right now but it is definitely stronger and it's definitely like more convenient and yeah, it's definitely easier to play Steel that's barge. for sure like this requires high concentration at all times Blazing evoker rush. sometimes is as complicated of a spec as evoker is don't make no mistake evoker is not that easy to play but skill ceiling is like the ce ceiling Steel might barge. be like just as high but the the amount you Blazing need rush. to get through things is way less so like you can play bad and still keep your team alive whereas on disc you need to play good but yeah anyway okay this was a huge digression Steel basically this entire pack i mean you can see it here it's uh as Blazing long as the rush. tectonic slam gets interrupted and if people are interrupting the bolts and stuff it's fine there's a lot of spells going through you just need to interrupt there's not really much for me to say about like priest there is you just need to trust your team to interrupt and do their job and Blazing hopefully rush. they do and then you need to heal the healable damage and survive yourself and that that's pretty much it there is there's really not much else there and this guy uses his defensive here i don't know if he would have died if he didn't but i wish he didn't because going into a boss without a defensive on tyrannical week is just Blazing kind of rush. trolling especially as hunter is one of like the most vulnerable classes to, to that it's really not fun so we'll see how that turns out uh, either way first boss after the nerf is a little bit more bearable uh, 
It's incredibly hard to pop everybody up and if pop. you get the debuff, if you get a circle. But other than that, it's not really Hail that on. crazy. It comes down to like one very simple thing. Like people need to be topped up, and if they get one shot, they get one shot. That's not really on you. Now, of course, as you push higher, you can find ways to kind of like minimize that. Uh, minimize it, actually, I should say. Uh, it's not easy though. But as you can see here, like we were kind of fine. It was okay. You know, I just kept the tournaments on everyone. Throw a couple of penances. You can smile and stuff. But here is where you have problems. You see, when you get circle, now you're kind of stuck because you're a slow priest and you're just kind of like stuck like this. Awaken so what I like to do is I like to make distance and you can either pop rupture like I did and just get everybody covered and stuff. But the Frost main reason overload. I popped rupture there is actually for this. So it was kind of like a double thing. Like it was both for that mechanic, but also for this, for frost overload and for whelps. So this is the highest like overall sustained damage part and like ideally dk should have used his amz here and people should have used some defensives they didn't really do that so it is what it is and this is what i mean when i tell you guys a lot of the times timing these cues comes down to your team as well as a healer if nobody's interrupting if nobody's pressing defensives there's not much you can do it's not your job to, to like handhold everyone and to just kind of like you know keep them alive uh, even when they're not doing their their part i mean if you can of course go for it but the higher you go the more impossible it gets and sometimes you know people don't make mistakes or don't play as good as they perhaps could and when these things happen there really isn't much you can do but see i'm holding like my harsh discipline uh, penance here I'm and I'm, i shoot it just as it's about to explode i hope you guys saw exactly what i'm doing there it's just like a little I mean, I almost said trick. It's not really a trick. It's how you're supposed to play this pack, but it's just an idea on how you can solve this because it's it is it is a hard hitting ability. It hurts a lot, and here you know you know it's bad when you have to resort to to do the good old like flash heal spam, which used to be a what was it shadow man spam in the last expansion. Worst spell in the game, by the way. I'm so glad they removed that shit and gave us instead storm the this one. And I got it for the second time here, which is pretty unlucky. And I decide to pop a rupture here. It's it's just some extra safety, you know, making sure everybody stays alive. This does hurt a lot, as I said, you know, one radiance as well goes out and schism, then you know, bannons dealing some damage. And after this, you're kind of chilling. So that wasn't too bad. You know, this boss is scary, as I said, but it's not too crazy. And here we just have a horrible positioning on the two players both me and uh, hunter we didn't really position ourselves properly and and druid actually druid was i didn't see who got it here druid or hunter but either way Hail bombs. we're all supposed to be away from that and uh not not really in the in the you know anywhere close to the, the ability because it does deal damage if you're in the circle by the way I, I, i'm not sure everybody knows that like because sometimes i see people chilling in that <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> uh yeah you don't want you don't want uh you don't want to be anywhere near that circle kind of funny that i made a same joke in game with no pun intended and stuff <laughs> uh but yeah let's uh let's uh let's focus now because we are we're going into the the very difficult boss uh mini boss here uh, it's a lightning dude uh, i have no idea what is what his things are called uh storm dragon whatever thunderhead yeah thunderhead and there's an absolute menace to society and uh just with quaking uh, everything just gets so much more complicated because you can't just freely spam radiance whenever you want and you can flash heal either whenever you want so basically the way i like Storm to do, deal with this on, on on fortified weeks you you dispel one and then heal up and you let the other one expire it sounds easier said than done Thunder on the second one you do the same pretty much you sh should get like three Storm or breath. four on fortified and on tyrannical you should get only two as you can see here and here i will decide to just let this expire into radiance do some healing but it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad but it can be tricky you just need to be very aware that this is not easy to heal for us on the on this it's uh it's 
it's a very awkward damage okay. profile, I feel like. Because it damages everyone, but it damages one person in particular more. So it's kind of, you know, it's kind of weird a little bit. You just, just have to be kind of like aware of, uh, of how much attention everybody needs, you know, with the heals and stuff. Uh, it's very important, yeah. Very important to be prepared for that. You need to have some damage ready for that. Maybe, maybe a harsh discipline ready or a shadow covenant. Uh, even barriers and stuff are very helpful in this particular dungeon. And this is why I say this dungeon is one of the hardest, uh, even though it's a short one. Potentially one of the shortest can be, right? This dungeon is very short when you think about it. It's only three bosses. It's 30 minutes long realistically you will well see done. like a lot of the times you can get to the last boss with, with like seven eight minutes left but Five. i've had keys uh, where i have gotten to the boss and then we wiped on the boss like two times and we still had a chance to time it but the boss sometimes just was not killable it all depends i'll talk about it i'm talking about the last boss but i'll talk about it when we get there why this week in particular was and awful but in general that boss is really not fun but it's not as bad as it was this week uh, in, in, overall we'll see actually i mean this week as i'm uploading this it's tyrannical week as it turns out so i will be pushing and ruby life pool is one of the you know one of the keys that i definitely want to push uh, at least to 22 this week at the very least so but we'll see how that goes i mean I have no doubts that it's gonna be challenging, but I, I feel like I can do it. I've also gotten like geared Inferno. since I made these made these videos. I got like three or Inferno. four eye levels since then, so that's pretty big. It's gonna be very helpful. So I'm looking forward to that. Anyhow. Um check this out, like it's 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 very challenging uh, uh to heal all of this because Infernal on combination with the flame cinders or flame boats or whatever it's called and then flame dance If people know exactly what to do, I have done some keys like in this key people are quite clued in on what needs to happen I mean, it's a perfect run so far like nobody has died. We've, we've made the mistakes, but nobody has died, right? Uh, which is cool. That, that is that is great. And you can see here. I'm Inferno. dealing with uh, with the Inferno with the rupture you just shield everyone you reduce the damage they take and you can keep shielding here but i find that pretty mana consuming that's why i'm not doing it this is why i've actually thought about moving away from this talent completely like because this is a talent which makes our rupture be so long inferno uh this talent was amazing when we played the um flame dance that that talent which made rupture go like big but then fade away over time that was amazing because you could just refresh shields and get a big rupture again but since we don't play that anymore i don't Flame really breath. know how worth it it is i am conflicted we'll talk about i'll make a video talking about build and stuff at some point i've not been saying it forever now but i'll get it done i'll try to get it done this week on the weekend uh, i want to make a good one that will stay you know that will be like there for you guys to kind of refer to and see what you need and what you don't need and stuff like that but yeah um just curious to hear like how everybody's experiences was with talents and stuff how you guys are liking the talents uh, do you guys change your talents a lot or do you just have like a base build and then change maybe one or two like per you know key depending on what key you're doing because that's that's what i'm doing but i also heard some people like to like experiment a lot because i guarantee you that at least for this the old build would be close to value like close in value at least a little bit at least a little bit i think it's not too far off and you could definitely go get get away with playing it uh, at least to an extent uh, but this build is just better because it, it does a lot of aoe damage so it's it's better like the, uh, the healing death. build is much worse in terms of damage it's noticeably Inferno. worse so it's i've always been a healer that likes to do damage it's a priority for me uh, it's why I've always liked this, why I've liked Polypala and why I like Evokers now. And why I wanna try Rest of Druid. It's because all of these healers. I mean they've been trying to balance this and Five, I really like that. It four, was really silly three, how in Shadowlands there was literally like two specs that could deal damage in terms of healers. Like serious damage. At some point they also added like Shaman. But Shaman's damage came from like a borrowed power, so I don't really know how much I count that. Like they yeah, sure they could deal it, but I don't know, but borrowed power doesn't For really now. feel like you know like you deal you'll deal damage because of covenant the legendary or whatever so that's kind of scuffed 
But yeah, we'll see. We'll see how they continue to balance things. I, for one, am a fan of current balancing. I think it's really fair. I do sometimes miss, you know, the days where Disc was like the, the damage, you know, dealer, but it's fair to other specs that they get an opportunity to deal damage too. Like I see like at the moment shamans are also moving up in the world. They can do a lot of damage and stuff. So that's good. That's good. Anyhow. Anyhow. Um, this boss very important is to kind of understand that this boss is a rhythm fight why i say rhythm fight it's a fight that's very repetitive there's no like any new overlap no nothing it's just he will do a couple of things he will uh this is the most important part by the way what just happened is something you cannot allow to happen um you need to take care of your tanks and that is what makes this boss fight hard it's not the aoe damage every spec can deal with aoe damage just fine if it's just aoe damage what happens is you need to dodge meteor you need to deal with the aoe damage and on top of that you need to keep the tank alive this is where the difficulty comes from and here i pop a barrier notice how this barrier is placed so dps can get into it but it's also for the tank so he can sit in here because when he gets these searing blows he, take extra, he takes extra damage and he takes stacks yeah. from the boss, so you really need to be careful there, you know, you really need to you really need to be wary. And here I'm stuck in a little bit of an awkward positioning. And these things are what causes vibes. Because right now, if he summons like an, an ad Ritual on me, we're kind of fucked. Me. And instead he summons it on, on Druid because we fell behind. And that's because we haven't really baited meteors Molten the Bowler. best. So you know this is just a positioning fight as i said it's a rhythm fight and you want to rotate your abilities and here i kind of fall off pretty hard that was that we were very close to death there because i was kind of saving my cds um i personally recommend using your uh, your mind bender as much as possible i think you can get it for every second add basically Mm -mm. I don't think you can get it for everyone reliably, but I think you can get it for every second one. I have, I need more testing. I have not done this key that many times. Um, basically, as uh, you know, once again, Boulder, Inferno coming up. You throw a Radiance. You're ready with your penance, ideally buffed penance. You can use your, uh, you can use your uh, uh, vampiric embrace. I have actually stopped using vampiric embrace. I don't use it anymore. Um, I'm playing just the pure like a leech. Just to keep myself alive because if i am alive i know i can keep others alive but if i start falling off myself then i get like scared not scared Ritual but you know what i mean like me. i get worried and then i kind of have to waste healing on myself like this leech just takes care of it you know a little bit of leech Boulder. from gear a little bit of leech from talents and you're good Searing and yeah i'm pretty brace is good but i don't think it's that good i think it's a little bit overrated honestly and here i'm intentionally letting like the paladin pick and i'm just healing through damage because i know pala has bubble by the way so i know pala like if he's a good player he will notice that he's dying and he will bubble he was actually very disciplined and very brave there which i respect and he decided to trust me and hopefully you know i i have you know earned with that and as you can see the boss is dead so even though i haven't played this amazingly we still got through so definitely with some optimizations you can you can get by i i i i personally recommend like focusing on positioning that's the most important you'd want to bait add on the correct position and you want to make sure tank stays alive a tank might need a pain up every time the searing blaze comes some tanks are better at dealing with it some tanks are worse i've had cases where tanks were completely self-reliant there as well it's just Lightning like storm. of course the very least you should do is put a power word shield on him and heal him through atonements while you're healing the rest of the group as well that's the very least so like don't don't forget about the tank there it's very important if you're playing with a tank that might be a little bit over, or under geared or not as good they will die there and you will you will like lose that Lightning boss fight storm. then because people will start chain dying and you will be stuck in a very uncomfortable position and it really sucks so don't forget about a tank you know dps the worst case scenario dps can use like health pots and health stones defensives immunities make a rotation make something you know uh, amz's uh um, barrier rupture all of these tools use them at your disposal these are very powerful tools it's what makes our specs so amazing and honestly this oftentimes comes down to managing your cooldowns and just kind of learning how to deal with mechanics uh while utilizing these because it's like 
If you just try to play disc as a healer, you're gonna struggle. You need to realize that the strength of disc kind of comes from the fact that we can mitigate so much damage by just playing our spec properly. And by Flash utilizing fire. shields, by utilizing rupture, by utilizing the barrier. Lightning uh, storm. And also by dealing high damage ourselves in combination with boosting somebody else's damage, such as uh, with, with PI, fire. right? Like when you PI, you not only boost their damage, but you also boost yourself. So, you know, there were cases where I have saved PI for the stretches where I know I will struggle. Don't be afraid to do that as well. There's a lot of Lightning spets storm. that benefit from PI even when they're not using it on cooldown. So usually if people think on, of PI as like, Oh, I only use PI if this guy's using cooldowns. Yes, that's usually the best. But if you know why you're doing that, if not, it's better, in my opinion, to just use it. Because you get value and somebody else gets value. So, for example, if you're PIing somebody like, I don't know, like Enhancement Shaman Lightning or something storm. like that, like, they're always gonna benefit from the haste. It doesn't matter if they're in cooldown or not. Of course, it's better if they're in cooldown, for sure. Once again, I'm not negating that, but I'm saying it's better to, to give pi than not give pi and die like that's what i'm that's what i'm trying to say like don't be sh shy to use it for yourself and obviously you're not gonna put it on yourself but you're using it for yourself but you're also you know reaping the benefits at the right time and here i kind of neglected the Lightning tank storm. i actually didn't notice you got a debuff that was a little bit of weird like looking back at it but at the time i was probably looking at something else i think i was dispelling those ads or something i don't know what i was doing but tank was in trouble there i he had to pop like uh, defensives um that's a little bit of a boot feed on my side. Uh, yeah, pay attention to tanks on these packs. They get clapped pretty hard. <laughs> Once again, no pun intended. They are, they are getting thunder clapped, though, no, literally. <laughs> but so are we. And then obviously be mindful of this uh, lightning storm. I mean, if you're playing this key on Fortified, that's probably the hardest boss of the, you know, this mini bosses. I've even saw, I've even seen people save lust for this guy. Uh, I've seen that in one dungeon, and it's. It's not crazy, it's not completely crazy. This is very hard to heal, by the way, especially if you're not entirely familiar with how this guy works. So he will summon these guys, as you can see, and then he does the Tempest Storm, and, uh, like, he gets this shield, right? And then, uh, if you don't burst the shield, basically, <clears throat> the more absorbed that remains, the more damage he will deal. It's like instant damage plus dots. Lightning on Tyrannical storm. it's pretty dangerous, but on Fortified it's basically a wipe if you don't burst it, so just be careful. I mean, I don't know if it's a wipe exactly, it depends on the key level, but it's pretty nasty. And the reason why it's so nasty is because afterwards he will cast another storm, which is like a constant taking AoE damage, so... It's just something that's like really brutal if you're not paying attention. But yeah, as you can see here, like look, like this timer, we were really close to like plus doing this. Like if we were just a tiny bit quicker... If we did like any sort of like double pull at some point or something, we would have we would have timed this. So yeah, just something to keep in mind. Anyhow, you know, boss fight. This boss is very tricky. Oh. Usually people like to kill the dragon before Storm phase two. Slam. Storm or you know, slam. as soon as possible. A very hard fight. As you can see, there is cloudburst. interrupting cloud charge, uh, which will deal away damage. I like to make sure I have atonement on everyone so I can heal after that. Usually I throw a penance after, but the tricky part now is there's also quaking. So yeah, it's very nasty. So, the dragon will target someone with that with a dot. And when the dot expires, like they get uh, here, I don't know what happened. I think it was like the thundering moment is what killed us. Like it was, we weren't positioned Storm properly. Storm. I don't know if it was me or somebody else, but our positioning was kind of dog, and we just kind of crumbled, and we couldn't find each other on time, and then chaos ensued, and it was very chaotic, as you can see. Winds We're just change. trying to DPS the dragon here. You need to watch Storm out here slam. for the winds of Storm changes, slam. because that will push both you and uh, 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 and the person that, uh, and uh, the fire fire trails and stuff <clears throat> and here as you can see <clears throat> interrupt you gotta stop casting and then quaking change. as well it can happen Storm at any time fire. so you gotta be very very careful i've had some really nasty overlaps that prevented me from like doing anything because the problem for us is like our instant heals are not that are not good enough for this boss fight they're not strong enough you need hard heals for this and basically if uh yeah. this is the most Storm dangerous slam. part you want to save rupture slam. for this by the way fire breath. um thank luckily survived there there was a, 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 a cheat to that proc basically 
uh, lucky for us, I guess, again. Uh, you Inferno need Rapture core. for that, by the way. So if, if there is like a spot where you want to, to keep change. Rapture, Storm that's slam. the spot. Storm but luckily slam. here we had a res, but the tank died. Because I didn't dispel him, because I was dead. Interrupting cloud uh, burst. And yeah, as you can see, I was a little, I was a little bit a little, little, little bit upset uh, because okay, so before this boss fight, a little bit of ba background. This isn't good. What what I just did. Like usually in these keys, you don't want to react like this. You should just kind of like we you you know. Uh, you need to calm down everyone, reassure everyone, make sure everybody's on the same page, nobody's leaving. And this is this is what I did now, you know, I'm, I'm trying to tell them. Uh, yeah, this is what I told them, like... The problem is... I, I, I exp I'm explaining here, okay, so literally what I'm telling you guys, I'm writing in the chat. Uh, in P1, we, when we when we screwed up with Thundering, I had to pop Rupture, or at least I felt like I had to pop Rupture to keep people alive, and I need Rupture for Phase 2. So, here I was just trying my best to do, you know, what I gotta do. And here I got interrupted by Quaking, of course. Yeah, oh my god, just watching this back is making me mold, I swear. But yeah, basically, the person that gets this debuff, like, you, you ideally, in this case, me, you need to position yourself in a way where the debuff you leave is gonna get knocked, not through the group, but the winds. So ideally, you know where the winds are gonna come from. There, there's like a weak aura for that and stuff, and I got debuffed again here. And honestly, I almost died. And I, was, I bet my team was kind of scared. Uh, my, my movement there was also very sketchy. Uh, but we, we somehow got through, uh, barely. I'm not dispelling tank here at all because I'm struggling to keep people alive here and then I dispel Things him late. Uh, but he just had to deal Storm with that. Slam. He was fine. Storm like I, I saw he was fine. He had uh, he had everything up. So I was assuming he was gonna be killing. And uh, like see here, like this flame burst. spit. See, now I wanna penance this Rory guy, but I can't breath. because he is uh, because he's casting the interrupt Winds and quaking and stuff. So. This is why Storm this boss slam. is tricky. Storm it's slam. really not fun boss for this. It really isn't. But you can deal with it if you're pre prepared. You just need to be like giga ready. Also, don't forget you have shadow fiend. Using your shadow fiend at the correct timings is extremely important. You, you can use it for like some extra bit of healing. For example, this would have been like a really good time to use shadow fiend. And we lose a druid here. Uh, I'm not sure if I could have prevented that. I think we just needed some more defensives. I don't understand why he didn't pop his bark skin there. That is actually kind of trolling. Uh, this ability Inferno deals less damage breath. than people think it Storm does. So the way it works Inferno is basically core. here I made a mistake of grabbing the debuff. That's, impo that's important like not to do. I stepped in fire. But this is how it works basically. You get the debuff every time you step into fire or if you get targeted by the, by the flame speed you get a stat, right? And the stats still damage, so you need to mitigate that damage, but the rest of the damage Storm is avoidable. Slam. And Storm this is where people make mistake. I don't know if they panic or something, but the pools can't touch you. You need to dodge the pools, and you should be able to live through this without, like, almost anything. Like, one small defensive should keep you alive. If not, then you need to help put or something. Storm but help slam. your healer Storm there. Slam. That is a very stressful Winds moment because three people get it at the same time and they all tick down to like 10% HP instantly almost. This is why this key is tricky and why this is hard to time. And on top of that, he will be casting like interruptible cloud burst, which interrupts cloud any burst. cast. So it's like super giga Storm stressful slam. and not Storm very pleasant slam. to play at all. And here I was just kind of like not panicking, but I was trying really hard to just maximize my damage. That's why I'm playing a little bit silly because we're running out of time. As you can see, like we only have 20 seconds left, but we actually did it. And I'm gonna have a little bit of uh, freak out here because I was so happy. Because before this, guys, I, I swear I, I failed like I think five keys on the last boss. Okay, some of them on the second boss, but I failed like three or four times on the last boss and it, it was really annoying and it wasn't all, always my fault, of course. <laughs> but it, this boss is just challenging, it's it's what I'm trying to say, like it's a, it's a hard boss, so I was just happy to get it. Anyway, happy to be able to share this with you guys, you know, if any of this helped, let me know in the comments. If, you know, you didn't like what you saw, let me know as well. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video, hope it was at least somewhat fun. I hope you guys uh, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, you know if you if you did you know make sure to comment like subscribe look out for more there will be more videos 
and uh yeah hope to see you again guys enjoy have fun with your keys guys let me know how this season expansion is going for you much love see you again bye bye